In terms of TV shows, looks like Batman is still undefeated. Cape Crusader was fantastic. Cape Crusader's interpretation of Batman is pretty slick, I gotta say. But of course, it's also grim and brooding. So as the rest of the show, you know what I'm saying, the setting and the, the tone and all that. And other characters. I'm highly impressed with this show, but let's jump into the cast. Um, Hamish, Hamish Link later. I hope I said that right. As Bruce Wayne is going to... No, as Batman, him voicing Batman, Bruce Wayne is going to take me a little time to get used to, you know what I'm saying? Despite uh, Conroy um, passing away, you know, Conroy's a legend, best Batman voice ever. He was still good, though, but it's funny because um, I thought this was like Kevin Conroy's last voice performance for the Batman, like before he passed away. But nope. Jason Watkins as um, Alfred Pennyworth. Um, Alfred always gonna be Alfred. Uh, but man, he been eating, boy, a lot lately. <laughs> Y'all can't lie about that. He been eating. Eating good. Eric Morgan Stewart as Jim Gordon was very impressive. Crystal Joy Brown as uh, Barbara Gordon was. She was. She was mean as hell at first. That's what I thought. But. As the show went along, she was cool, you know. But then again, she has her dad's attitude and approach to things, so it makes sense. John DiMaggio, one of the more talented voice actors voicing Harvey Bullock, he was very, very good. Um, He voiced the Sandman, uh, Hammerhead, and Spectacular Spider-Man. I knew I heard a little bit, bit of that in him, but um, very good. Um, Gary Anthony Williams voicing Arnold Flass, um, he was great. But, bro... Flies was a dirty dude, man. He's still a cool character, but man, him and Harvey was just corrupted. It's, it's so hilarious, bro, how corrupted they were. But also, he voiced uh, Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> this dude voiced Uncle Ruckus, man. Boondocks. Michelle Bonita as Ray Renee Montoya was cool too. Montoya probably had the most important role out of all the detectives. There's got to be one honest one at the bunch. Jamie Chung as Harley Quinn. I like the Harley Quinn in this one. Harley Quinn by herself without the Joker is different, man. She was dangerous. I enjoyed Deatric Bader as Harvey Dent Two-Face. I like how he played more of a realistic Harvey Dent. We usually get the more modest and honest Harvey Dent, but this one we get the narcissistic, brass, whatever uh asshole type Harvey Dent, bro. He didn't get, he didn't care about nothing for real. Christina Rishi as a Catwoman, Selena Cow, she was awesome. Reed Scott as Onomatopoeia, awesome. Crazy thing is, I never heard Onomatopoeia as a Batman villain. I never heard of bro. I gotta look more into him. His aesthetic is pretty cool. Dan Donahue as the Basil Carlo version of Clayface was exceptional. You know, I like this version of Clayface a lot. You know, it's more grounded, classical, and I think it fits the style of the show very well. Makina Grace as Nocturna, Natalia Knight. Man, she was dangerous, man. Batman spared her life, bro, but ah, man, if I was Batman, I would just let her do it, man. I would just let her fade away, bro. I don't care, man. See, another thing that I like a lot about this show is that it pulls villains that I never even heard of before, like Onomatopoeia or Nocturna and Jim Craddock, Gentleman Ghost. But it also pulls underrated villains, Clayface and um, Firefly. It's weird that he went by a firebug, but man, you Firefly, you Firefly, bro. Mini Driver as Oswald the Cobblepot as the female penguin. The thing about the female penguin... I ain't know what to think at first. I'm like, uh, gender swap. Mm, I'm not sure about this, man. I'm not like female penguin. What? However, she put on a good performance. You know what I'm saying? She played a dangerous, bro. She played a ruthless penguin, bro. Like, I'm talking about like killing her own kids, bro. Like, come on. She was nuts, man. All right, let's dive into these episodes. And Treacherous Waters was straightforward. We don't get any kind of origin buildup of Bruce Wayne, Batman, or nothing like that. We just get a, we just top into a whole rivalry between Rupert Thorne and Oswald the Cobblepot, the Penguin. 
the penguin son rats her out and after one of the brothers watched his brother get killed by their mother the penguin uh, he goes straight to the gcpd and now all of the penguin's attention is on gcpd she wants to blow it up i don't blame the older brother for doing that either because he was next on the chopping block batman engages the penguin keeping her from destroying the police department batman strong as hell bro he freaking throws the penguin off of him like a like a pillow the penguin is then defeated the penguin pretty much just loses this whole episode um after that she doesn't show up in the rest of the show anymore like she just a one and done and so it's not it wasn't that much there for the penguin in this show i mean most villains in this season were one and done but i feel like she was supposed to be bigger so episode two and be a villain is probably my most favorite episode this season maybe we get the serial killer basil carlo version of clayface he was awesome basil was pretty down bad in this episode he tried to change his face to impress his girl you know but she just wasn't having it still so he just kidnaps francis to get his get back the way clayface was uh, elusive in this episode reminded me how elusive um the phantasm was in batman master the phantasm i just thought that correlated really well but um also the animation in here is great it's like a polished up new rendition of the batman animated tv series episode three kiss of the Catwoman. old thieving old Catwoman. the bruce wayne selena kyle dynamic still there she gets locked up stealing jewelry but harvey dent ends up bailing her out like harvey's so corrupted bro i'm telling you this is probably the most realistic portrayal of harvey dent i've seen yet i forget how broke catwoman is i also found it interesting how ba catwoman is inspired by batman in this show by just making her own vehicle like the batmobile bro catwoman really tried to make her maid greta work for free bro like man she did what she had to do on that one bro did y'all see how batman just straight up gave uh blast and bullock just combos piecing them up bro because blast was about to kill catwoman man but batman just jumped to action like hell no bro y'all tripping it's my girl i ain't nah it's like damn he could have threw a battering at flash's gun but man no he just straight up hit him with <laughs> like come on he like he, yeah he needed to protect catwoman episode four night of the hunters the gcpd desperately wants to catch batman and imprison him of course they'll fail miserably but we'll see what they do and you know as corrupt as harvey and flash are they want to go out and get firefly to lure out batman so they can catch batman and just I don't know, pay off Firefly and let Firefly go, just wreak havoc and burn up whatever they can burn up, man. Like, come on. Harvey and Flash then proceeds to kill uh, Firefly in order to cover their tracks so they won't, uh, so Firefly won't give them up to the GCPD. They'd be locked up too. But man, bro, I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to think, bro, are Flash and Harvey the real villains, bro? Because, man, it was cutting up this season, bro. I forgot they even killed Firefly, but um, I think Firefly might have been Firefly the only actual one and done character villain in this show, bro. Like, bro, they really got him up out of here. Episode five, the stress of her regard. In this episode, we get a more we get a serious portrayal of Harley Quinn, which I thought was really good consider all the rest of the hyper happy go lucky bang bang harley quinn's we get you know what i'm saying harley quinn really put her psychiatric background to use just um brainwashing the hell out of random civilians harley quinn and montoya are a couple however their relationship was short-lived harley quinn then falls to her death after her own detonation but she's still alive of course I'm pretty sure Batman knew that too. Episode 6, Night Ride. This episode was striking to me because um, we have this villain, you know what I'm saying, like back from the dead, who just want to just straight up rob everybody in Gotham and just <laughs> like every night come <laughs> coming through Gotham as some spirit on a horse, bro. That shit is weird. I'm like, how is Batman supposed to defeat this guy? Like, what? 
how's this a Batman villain? I'm thinking this is going to be like Solomon Grundy or something. Just by the premise of the episode, but nah. Bro, Gotham is just flat out ridiculous, bro. Imagine just getting robbed by somebody uh, who's a spirit. Uh, a, a dude from the 1700s looking a whole spirit just robbing you, bro, and just running away with her with the horse, just laughing away, bro, and just completely vanished. Like, bro, what the hell? It's funny because as powerful as he is, that shit makes him look like a, a street level villain, bro. I thought his backstory was very inclining because he was just an angry British loyalist that was just mad at George Washington, the founding fathers. That man said, oh, don't tell me all men created equal. It was funny when that one scene, he, he took that, uh, he took it personal when that dude called him a traitor. He said, you call me a traitor? You betrayed everything we ever stood for. Yeah, James Craddock is the most interesting villain in this show by far. Yeah, he called Lucius Fox a rabble. Like, hey, I honestly don't want to know what Linton Midnight was going to do with James Craddock in that little vial. Just the vague energy he left off, man. Like, you got it, bro. Or even Batman took it into consideration, bro. Like, he, he didn't want to know either. The last part of this episode, we get Harvey giving in to Rupert Thorne. Look, we knew what I was going to happen. Episode 7, Moving Target. This episode was kind of random because uh, why was there just a bounty just placed on Jim Gordon's head? Like, damn, bro. Like, Gordon, get, we barely get to see Gordon in any action in this movie, but you know, I mean, I mean TV show, but damn, he, he gets a, a target on his head. Like, come on. Overall, great mid season episode. We also get Deadshot in this episode, which I didn't know till recently. We learn later on in the episode that it's Barbara who's the real target, but still, what did Jim do? But finally, we learned that some dude named Mueller wanted Jim Gordon and his daughter uh, whacked because he wanted to be treated better in prison. Like, man, what the hell, bro? That's crazy. You a crazy dude. That's a nut right there. I don't know. I feel like it's more to it. I don't know. But Onomatopoeia was a quite mysterious, very mysterious villain. Um, I like this whole aesthetic style, whatever, you know. He's kind of goofy, though, because every time he, like, hit somebody, he makes a sound <laughs> while fighting them. I also like the character designs for Onomatopoeia and his henchmen too, man. Great stuff. Episode 8, Nocturne. We get Anton Knight, a madman inventor slash scientist who uh, gives her, give his younger sister powers, super strength and all that. But in order for her to stay alive and keep her powers, she must drain the life force energy out of young children. He pretty much had his sister's life hung by a thread. Not to mention, Anton is a very sick, demented guy. But um, man, I thought he was going to be uh, Hugo Strange, bro. But nah, that would have been fire, though. Meanwhile, all this is going on, Harvey's campaign is being funded by mob boss Rupert Thorne. Thorne wants Harvey to drop the charges on this dude named Milligan, Matt Milligan, who uh, was a scammer. Harvey ain't really going for it, but he gives in anyways. Bro, I knew uh, Rupert Thorne's henchmen uh, look from, uh, seemed familiar, man. Because uh, I think they model him, it looked like they model him after uh, Lucky Luciano. But funny enough, the voice actor who plays him played Lucky Luciano in Boardwalk Empire. Vincent Piazza, I think that's his name. Another great series. Uh, amazing voice actors in this show, man. I knew he sounded familiar, though. All right, now, fast forward. Nocturna killed, ended up killing her brother. Well, because her brother is a, a maniac. Batman apprehends her um, from killing any more kids are draining any more of their energy. I'm glad Batman mentioned to her uh, that she killed her brother, man, because as a defense mechanism, because man, ooh, she was, she was gonna keep whooping his ass. After that, her body begins to cave in on her. Um, Batman ends up saving her because of his morals. Batman ends up covering her body to keep her from being killed off by the sun because the sun is a catalyst for her body being destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Her brother really screwed her over, but damn, bro, like, 
since Batman kept her alive, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's in, uh, wherever she is, um, hospital or insane asylum or whatever. It's like, damn, bro, it's like, she wanted to die, but keeping her alive is going to make her suffer more, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's just going to have to, she's going to have to stay in the dark and shit. Like, come on, bro. I don't know, man. I think I would have just let her do what she had to do, man. At the end of this episode, we get Harvey not dropping the charges of the criminal that uh, Rupert Thorne wanted him to drop for, but uh, Thorne understandably takes this personal and have his henchmen uh, throw acid on <laughs> Harvey's face, and now we have Two-Face. See, I wonder how exactly Harvey was going to fix Gotham. Like, come on. Episode 9, The Killer Inside Me. Now, by this time of the show, I'm just heavily locked in. I want another season, so, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, Harvey's face, bro. <sighs> bro, that gotta be, like, the most ugliest depiction of Harvey's face on, uh, animation, bro. I swear. Like, way ugly, uglier than, um, the 90s Batman show, bro. Even the video games, all that, bro. It's like, bro, that shit ugly, bro. It's like, I don't know, it made me uncomfortable for some reason, bro. I know it triggers something. Man, I take that back, man. The other portrayals be having them look half reptile, half human. Be another great character design. I kind of wish he sported this black and white on one side and white and black on one side fit, you know what I'm saying? With the suit and tie. Yeah, that would've been cool. This was a very satisfying episode for me because uh, Two-Face just got all his revenge on his enemies. Bro, I was hoping Batman wouldn't interfere with uh, his confrontation with um, Thorne's right hand man. I forgot his name. The one who threw the acid on him, but yeah, man. I was like, man, I hope Batman don't come through with a batarang flying. Just nah, yeah, bro. Come on. Let him have this. Man, I always love this uh, buildup of Harvey's story transitioning to uh, Two-Face, man. Also, the outcome of him transitioning. Man, I swear, like, Harvey, bro, it's like, uh, cause it's split personality, man. It's like when he uh, switches over to Two Face, man. His Two Face personality is like, bro, he get like a boost in like strength, speed, uh, um, reflexes, uh, awareness, a bit, all that, bro. Like he just, but of course, Batman easily pieces him up. And now he finds out that Barbara Gordon is his lawyer. Another great watch. Now we on the last episode, episode ten. Savage Knight. We got Thorn, Bullock, and Flash, the crook the cops, plotting on uh, Harvey, man. This Two Face was real cautious around Barbara, you know. So you think he would just beat her up and just snatch the cuffs off her hand, but nah, man, he just had a soft spot for her. You know, I thought it was hilarious how uh, Harvey Two Face was exposing um, um, Bullock and Flash and how corrupt they are, shedding light on their devious activities and. Basically, how uh, Bullock is a uh, pretty much a fall guy, scapegoat for Flash. You know what I'm saying? Since Bullock and Flash is on Thorne's payroll, Flash ends up putting a dent in Harvey. He kills Harvey. Eventually, he almost kills Barber too, bro. I'm like, damn, bro. Like these dudes are cold as fuck, man. Cold hearted, but but then Batman springs to action. You know, he didn't get to save. Harvey because it's already too late, but he got to save Barbara, and man, boy, he aimed that gun at Flash, man. I'm like, nah, Batman ain't gonna shoot this dude up. He he ain't gonna kill him, man. But yeah, he ends up shooting a whole bunch of bullets around him, and then Flash is just scared out his mind. Cause you remember earlier in the season, um, Flash shot up, uh, was about to kill Catwoman, but Batman, you know, interfered, and yeah, now with this situation, man. Wee boy, Flash is hanging by a thread with this one. So now are our Flash and Harvey Bullock the real villains in this, bro? Like, come on. Lastly, we get a scene with these hostages all tied up. <laughs> we all know what that indicates. Joker, so um, there's a brief shot of Joker, and man, I cannot wait for season two. I think this time was season two, man. Well, I hope Joker's the main villain of this season, for real. I sure hope there's many more villains, but um, 
you know, I just want Joker. I don't want Joker to be like a one and done, you know what I'm saying? I want him to last. So so there you have it. Season one, Batman, Cape Crusader. Uh, I really enjoyed this show. I'll give it an 8.5 through a 9 out of 10, somewhere around there. Great writing, phenomenal style, animation, characters were great. Very cool villains, but man, this show this show made me want to walk, go back and watch the old Batman 90s. Um, animated series show, man. Episodes I didn't watch yet, but good stuff. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Comment what you think about this season. And uh, I'm Darts, and I'm out. Peace.